We are starting things out today with a very special guest. This is Nick LaPressi, who was recently named Executive Director of the Finger Lakes SPCA of Central New York. But we were just kind of getting a little background on you, Nick, and this is not your first gig in dealing with animals and trying to find homes for these little buggers, correct? Where do you, where, where did, what did you do before this? So that's correct. Uh, before this, I worked at another shelter. Uh, I was there for nine years as, as a manager, uh, the last uh, two of which I was the behavior manager there. Um, I've been in the animal care field for 15 years, and I've been in animal welfare for the past 10. Um, back in 2019, I went back to school for animal welfare management, um, and that has just been absolutely wonderful. I went to the University of the Pacific located out in California uh, to get that degree. So that has just been absolutely wonderful now to be in this role um, has been absolutely wonderful and great. There's, that's impressive, number one. Uh, number two, there's a lot of passion behind that clearly right like what made you want to get involved with animal welfare and ultimately go back to school to like specialize in that yeah so it's you know it started rebecca when i was when i was a child and i had some dramatic events happen in my life and i really learned uh from an early age just how strong that animal human bond can be and being in animal welfare i always tell everybody it's not just about the animals. I've never had an animal come and knock on my door. It's about the people that are behind that animal. And however, they're looking to use our services, knowing that we are there to help strengthen that human animal bond and not only help animals, but help the people as well. So that's wonderful. Um, so you, the Finger Lakes SPCA of Central New York, for people who don't know what that is, who you serve, what is it, and who do you serve? So we're we're located in Auburn, New York. We primarily serve Cayuga County. Um, however, we serve the Finger Lakes region. Um, you know, if we're able to help somebody, even if they're outside of Cayuga County, you know, we will help them. Um, so we're here to serve the you know the Greater Finger Lakes. Oh, that's pretty cool. What is the uh, what are some of your goals as executive director there over at the uh, SPCA? In the Finger Lakes. So, you know, some of my goals are already coming to fruition uh, to increase adoptions and also increase our, you know, capacity for care and increase the number of animals we're able to bring in and help uh, throughout the course of the year. Uh, one of my big goals is partnering with other non for profits to help more people in the community through different services that we can offer, whether that be, you know, food pantry, uh, you know, working with ho people that are homeless to provide care and boarding for their pets. So really starting to look into working with other uh, businesses or organizations to, to help people in the community. And so what are some of the biggest challenges of your job, like on a day-to-day -day basis well animal welfare uh you know some days are not always the best you know we do offer humane law enforcement that serves cayuga county so some days can be you know pretty emotional and i think you know that is always can be the toughest toughest part of it and so like for you though what is what makes what drives you to get up every day and and be in this role that does present challenges every day. What really drives me is, you know, the helping, you know, helping the people, helping the animals, um, you know, that thank you at the end of the day that I see the services that we are providing have really just not only helped the people, but helped that animal as well and helped to strengthen that bond is, is really what drives me. So when you're able to, you know, get an animal in a new home and help it out too, is it a kind of a bittersweet feeling when, it, when it's able to go off to a new family or do you feel mostly positive, you know, just being able to kind of get that animal to a, to a great home? It's definitely all positive. Okay. Uh, you know, I we, must feel a little bit of sadness though, seeing it go, right? Uh, n not really because, you know, Nate, we are, we are the temporary housing. Mm -hmm. Those animals, you know, 
don't belong with me. They belong in a loving home with right. people. So it is a celebration every single time that one of our animals finds that loving forever home. And how do you, how do you vet people? Because I remember when I adopted my dog, Boo, many, many years ago in Hempstead, Long Island, RIP Boo, greatest little terrier mutt ever. Um, and you can quote me on that. I wish I had a picture of him to pull up, but I have pictures of him, I think on my probably Facebook and Instagram. But so I adopted a three-year-old mutt who had behavioral problems. And I remember um, I, it wasn't an SPCA organization. It was something a little different, but it was a local no-kill shelter. And he had been adopted and brought back three or four times just because he was he was a fiery little bugger. And I know People who knew Boo knew what I'm talking about. He was just—he was very barky. He had leash aggression. Um, he was just a little, you know, he had some issues like we all do, right? Yeah. Um, but then when I came in, they kind of said that, you know, they that, that this was his last chance because he was brought back so many times. Um, I didn't really know what that meant at the time, but it ended up working out for me and Boo because we had like a 13-year love affair. Um, so that was great, but uh, and and I loved him. And you know, as he got older, he kind of calmed down. But there were always some issues. We hired trainers, but I remember them vetting me pretty carefully and having to go through some questions. And at the end of the day, they just kind of said, you know, based on the interview that I that I had a lot of energy and Boo had a lot, well, his name was Connor at the time, but I changed it. But they they, they said that my energy matched his energy and that we would probably be a good match. And they were right. And it was literally the best life-changing decision that I ever made. I mean, that dog was with me through everything. He was my best friend. So, you know, vetting people, is it, some people I think have an interpretation of that, like you're going to get put through the ringer, you're going to get all these personal questions, someone's going to come to your house. What actually is the vetting process like? Like when someone comes in and wants to adopt a dog, what are your responsibilities in sort of looking at that person or family and making sure that it's going to be hopefully a good fit and a successful long-term love affair is what I would yeah. call it. So uh, we recently just changed our adoption policies around. Okay. And, you know, I am a firm believer in a conversation-based adoption. And so what we are doing is, Rebecca, if you were to come in and, and want to get a dog from us, is you would, you know, figure out which dog you might be interested in. And then you'd have a conversation uh, with one of our adoption counselors on what are you looking for in that in that pet? And, you know, what is your lifestyle like? And then we're going to go through and help you find the, the, the best pet for your household. Um, it may not be that original first dog that you thought was the cutest. And I might say, you know, <laughs> this dog really fits your, your, what you're looking for a little bit better. Would you just want to meet them? Um, and then, you know, really have those good conversations of, you know, what proper veterinary care is, what proper exercise and behavior care would be for, for this particular pet. And then any questions that you might have as an owner, um, you know, we did just start what I like to call a sleepover program. What? So, you know, if people are a little unsure um, if this is the right one, what we can do is a what we call like a short term foster slumber party type style where you get to take that pet home for up to two weeks and see how they are, see if they fit your lifestyle. You know, and if it doesn't work out, that's okay because I gained more information to help me better find the perfect home for that animal as, as well. Um, so I really find just by having a really good conversation, um, I can really figure out what you're looking for in that perfect pet. Uh, and you get feedback about the dog because so, so Sherman, who's currently my dog, he's also, he was from Verona Street. He's a Mastiff mix. He's got jowls and so adorable. Again, wish I had a picture of him. But um, he was fostered before we adopted him. And um, there was so much feedback, like there was paperwork with feedback, which I'm imagining that this sleepover thing is a great idea because they'll, they can give you information like, oh, he has trouble maybe going tinkle in the house or he 
chewed my my shoes or there are different things that like you'll find out and then you can work around these things by putting like measures into place within your household and this is just feedback that you can provide for somebody else coming in about that that pet like well we've gotten feedback that you know he's not the greatest with alerting you when he needs or she needs to go outside right and so that's something where like there's a growth opportunity or maybe we have a trainer that can come in and somebody can can sort of ad address that but it is is that do you get a lot of good feedback that you then provide to the next person that comes in interested in that pet if the foster sleepover doesn't necessarily work out that's that's exactly right and you know it's it's just been wonderful to see that process we've had very little animals come back and part of that too is we're doing adoption follow-up calls as well you know we want to call that people the call that owner now within a week and say you know hey i just want to know how how your new pet's doing is there anything more that we can provide and help and we also might find at that time you know oh well they're having some trouble potty training oh okay here's some great resources here's how you want to try to go through that so we want to be there not only you know pre-adoption but post-adoption too to help any of our adopters that are coming in it's about like removing the judgment and giving people real solutions and not saying like, well, what are you doing? Because people are busy, like people have to work and not everybody can be at home. And sometimes like there are people that have to leave their dogs home for several hours because they have, again, to work like so many of us do, most of us do. Um, so, you know, it's not good when if someone were to adopt a dog and then they feel bad, they feel like they're failing. It sounds like you guys, it sounds to me like a mission of yours is removing the judgment from the people it, that's that's right you know it they should never be about judgment rather somebody's coming in to adopt or surrender an animal it's about us helping and that's what our primary goal is to help anybody that's coming through our doors and figuring out what is the best way that we can help flipping over to the volunteer side how can uh, people get involved in your organization so right now, uh, on our website, there is a, a volunteer application. People can feel free to fill that out, or they can feel free to come into the shelter and fill out a volunteer application as well. Um, I am in the midst of looking at different volunteer opportunities and how we are going to be moving forward to hopefully get a lot more volunteers than, than we currently have in different positions for volunteers. Um, we are also always in need of donations, whether those be monetary or items. We do have an item wish list on our website as well. Um, general cleaning supplies are always the most most needed, believe it or not, with with the animals. And so, how many? How big is your facility, and how many animals can you have at one time in terms of dogs and and cats? So cats, uh, we can have about 25 to 30. Okay. And dogs, I have 19 kennels all, all together. Okay. Um, you know, part of that is uh, we do have dog control officer contracts with several different towns. So if a dog is found at large, we, we house those as well. Um, and then we also have a humane law enforcement. So we're, we're charged with humane law enforcement cases um, in the county of Cayuga. So I also will have uh, animals in there for cruelty crimes. So if a dog is abused, you'll get, the dog can come to you and you participate in, if like say somebody's facing a felony. I mean, we had a case recently where somebody was facing a felony for animal neglect. Are you a part of that? Yes. So legal process? Yes, so we do have a, a humane law enforcement officer um, on staff. Um, and he is responsible for following up with animal cruelty or animal abandonment crimes for the county of Cayuga. So if we do have to, you know, confiscate an animal due to one of those crimes, they would be held at our facility. And we wanted to talk about one little guy. I think he's a little pit bull mix. I don't know if Paul is able to bring up a picture of him. What was his name? I can't see Piper. it. Piper. Piper. Yep. Oh my goodness. So Piper, you said is maybe moving along. He may be, he's getting some attention. Um, but what's Piper's situation? He's currently at the shelter. So Piper is currently in a foster home. 
Uh, I got Piper into a foster home back in January. Uh, Piper has been with us for a year and a half. She's kind of grown up in the shelter. She originally came to us for, oh, she was about three, four months, and now she's about two. And I, you know, we're in contact with the foster parent weekly, and it is just so great to see Piper actually in a home. Um, and we have had some interest in her, and hopefully Piper will find her forever home very shortly. Um, but she is still available for, for adoption. She's a great little girl. Oh, my God. Tell me about her personality, please. Okay. Look at those ears. <laughs> Looks like a little bat. Yeah. So Piper, as you can just see in her picture, she is just full of spunk, full of energy. She sees somebody and she will just run you down just for love. And, you know, the first time I met her uh, was the first day that I started uh, at the SPCA. And I got out of my car and here's this volunteer with Piper and Piper's just running full speed ahead yeah. directly at me. And she stops right at my feet, sits, and I don't think one muscle in her body wasn't wiggling and she was just all about pet me pet me pet me pet me pet yeah. me uh, she's a just a fantastic little girl loves to play fetch all day um so she's she's just she's just full of energy and just character that dog is all character and it's you know you have to work hard to find the right home for a dog like that. Some people want a dog where they're out and they have this active lifestyle where they live in a dog friendly mm -hmm. apartment. They live by a park. They like to go hiking. They, you know, there's, there's so many lifestyle and situational things that a dog like that would fit into. Whereas some people it would be a, a completely not a good match. Like if you want a dog like mine, like Sherman, who's just like, you know, snores and just lays around all day. Pretty good impersonation. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's like a pig, you know, he just doesn't really, he'll go on a hike, but he's not like, he's a mastiff. He just kind of wants to lay around and guard. He's a guard breed. Um, so he's not like high maintenance when it comes, and I don't want to say high maintenance, that's probably like negative connotation because boo is high maintenance, if that's what you would call it. But when it comes to like their needs and exercise, you need to find somebody who has a certain access to a park, maybe a backyard and, and a certain lifestyle. Correct? Yeah, and that's you know, and that goes back to, you know, our adoption conversations, yes. you know, with people. And, you know, we've had a couple already that, you know, have said, Boy, you know, Piper's just not the correct dog for my household. Um, so, you know, again, going back to those conversations and talking with people of here's all the information now that we have on her. And that was one of the real important things with fostering. And that is a great way if anybody out there is interested in fostering to help get those dogs out of our facility. Because a dog like Piper, who was originally brought to us um, as a law enforcement case, I don't have any information on. And in the past month, we have gained so much information to help us find that perfect home for her that that's how we're able to find that home is having that information ahead of time. So being a foster parent is just so wonderful. Like, I'm so jealous that you get to do like what you do, but I'm also like the thought of it, I could burst into tears. I feel like there you have to be cut from a certain mold to be able to be, to work in this professional career path. Because like I said, like me, I'm just, I would be, it would be waterworks. Forget it. Like if I had to say goodbye to a dog, I mean, Nate knows. Uh -huh. if, I had to, <laughs> if I had to say goodbye to a dog or if like something bad happened, I just, I, I would want to help, but I wouldn't be able to like keep it together because animals are such an emotional part of my history just like you said they were such an emotional part of yours so like how do you do it emotionally i guess so emotionally you know in the moment i always have to remember i am going to have those those bad moments and those sad moments but the amount of good that we do far outweighs those bad moments wow. and the other part for me is my family my family is my rock they are the ones that at the end of the day i get to go home to and unwind and get my mind off of what i might have had to deal with so you know good e 
you know, compassion fatigue skills and emotional skills to not dwell on those those moments is really what's needed in a role like this. Just, you know, kind of like any, you know, civil service type role where you might be dealing with, you know, emotionally stressful situations. And what is your guys' connection to the ASPCA? If there is. If there is one. any. So there is not one. There is not one. Um, you know, I'm just curious about that. Yeah. yeah so we, we are all. just a, a, you know, a society for the prevention of cruelty to animals. Okay. Um, the ASPCA is the American Society for Prevention gotcha. for Cruelty to Animals. So they encompass the whole entire nation. Um, we are our own entity, um, and we thrive off of just donations. So it is literally... Cool. It is literally our community that lets me help the animals in our community. So it is we are completely funded by donations from from the Finger Lakes really community. Cool. It's cool, but that's got to be that's got to be really tough because you don't have a lot of support then, right? Like nationally. You, yeah, we you know we don't have the national support, but you know I will say you know this community is absolutely wonderful uh we recently did um some shelter renovations to to our kennels to get them up to par and the when i put out there that we were looking for donations to do this the amount of support was just overwhelming and i couldn't believe how quickly we were able to raise the money to better the lives of the dogs in our care um, you know, and right now I have a two year plan to fully renovate our kennels. Uh, oh, wow. They have been, we built them in 1954. So they are 69 years old and it's time for them to retire. Um, so once again, I'm, I'm going to be asking the community to help us with, with those renovation projects to have something new, have something state of the art. So when the animals are in our care for the short time they should be, um, they can feel comfortable. Uh, so I really look forward to the next two years and seeing our shelter building transform into something new. So you can just come by and drop off a check or you can donate online. Is that how the donations go? Yeah. So if somebody's interested in, in donating, they can either call the shelter and I can take a, a card over the phone. Um, they can go to our website. There is a donation uh, right on our website. Um, they can feel free to come in and, you know, feel free to give us cash or check or, or mail us those, those things. Um, so we've tried to make it easy for people to support us as, as well. And I, I mean, for my final question, and then I am going to ask if Paul has any questions. I don't know if he does, but Nate, also I'll, I'll ask if you guys have any follow-up because I don't want to, I could talk to them about this all day. Um, so I guess if you could explain to people, I guess in your own words, um, what is the satisfaction of adopting a shelter mutt? I mean, like I know because I, like I said, Mr. Boo, 13 years best best decision I made um, for you why do you think that people should consider adopting a pet instead of buying a pet you know these are animals that really need a second chance and giving that animal a second chance not only are you helping that animal but that person behind that animal that had to bring it in. I have never in my 15 years met somebody who came in because they wanted to surrender their animal. They were in a position that they had no other choice. So not only are you helping to give that animal a second chance, you are giving that person behind it that, that feeling that my animal is in a loving home and it is being cared for. So not only are you helping that animal, but you're helping that, that person behind that animal as well. Yikes, I never even thought about that, but that's- that's So powerful. It is really powerful because it's, it's so true and you're right and, I, and who wants to say, there's, there's so many things that you, you know, you could judge someone, right? Really easily, we could all just judge someone, but you really never know. <laughs> what's going on in someone's life unless you're living their life or you're in 
whatever relationships or jobs that they're in. So it is powerful. And um, thank you so much for coming in. We're so excited to meet you and have you on the show. Um, just keep us posted on, you know, what happens with Piper, <laughs> of course, because now we're all going to be wondering. And um, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap up? Anything that we should have asked you that we didn't? No, I just want to thank, you know, both both Nate and Rebecca here today for, for having me on. It was my absolute pre- pleasure to come on, and I really enjoyed talking to you both. And, you know, for anybody out there that's interested in what we do, please feel free to go to our website or give us a call directly, and I would be more than happy to talk with them. Thank you so much, Nick, for stopping by. 